You are live now because these things start recording. We are sending this to Miranda McKeon of the Rizbo Lucas today. And I'm so excited because it has been years since I've seen. Miranda has joined. Miranda has been given the invite. Is Miranda going to come up? And as moderator, is that the way to do it? Have you gotten the invite, Miranda? I even have an M cup in your honor today, just so you know. Here we are, accept. Did you get it? Oh! Hello! Oh, what an introduction! <laughs> I got Just the picture of beauty. Okay. So, so cute. How long is it? Did you see this? Can you... Wait, can... Is my connection okay? It seems okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, are you worried? Are you worried that it's rough? I'm worried because I live in a big house with a lot of girls. So sometimes it's weird, but I think so popular. Wait, there's so many people. On. Yeah, they're all coming in. <gasps> Look at all of this. Hey, Everybody. <laughs> this is amazing. Okay, let's. I, okay, I cannot believe that I'm this is after all this time. This is how we're reconnecting. But considering that we are currently in the same state, it's going to come. We're gonna we're gonna have an in person thing, uh yeah yeah she does look stunning. Um, hi, I know. <laughs> I um, agree. I'm I'm waiting for um as I texted you our in person hug, but this is the next best thing, mm -hmm. and I love a little public moment. You know, okay. so fun to share this with other people. Right, because a, a love love creates love, so let's just share our love with the with the world. Um, exactly. Uh, to start, I'm just going to do like a little introduction so everyone knows who you are, where we're at, what we're doing here today. We're being hosted by a company called Kino. Uh, it's a new film company that democratizes film, ensuring the people actually involved in the magic of movie making are being compensated properly for their work while elevating the fan experience and championing underrepresented and diverse stories, which is all a beautiful focus on the community and no one would be anywhere without it, which is why we are here today to share the amazingness that is Miranda McKeon with you all. And to tell you a little bit about Miranda, and you can like correct me at any point because this is just my deep dive from um, the okay. internet and your blog. Um, uh, Miranda's 20 years old, a writer, actress, thriver, college student, and inspiration, born in New Jersey, Booked her first professional acting role while in the sixth grade and missed the first half of school of the school year to perform eight shows a week in an off-Broadway play in New York City called Little Miss Sunshine. Was it Little Miss Sunshine? I looked yeah. it up on the, the playbill.com. It was cute. Yeah. <laughs> um, then in the eighth grade, completed her, and this blew my mind, 200-hour yoga teacher training in Bali. Yeah, we never talked about that. No. Did you, <laughs> did you do that with, did you do that with your mom? So many layers. Um, no, so my mom was a yoga teacher at the time, but we went through someone else. So she was adding on, I think she's like 500 hours now, but I had not started my teacher training. So totally separate. But she came with me. She pulled me out of school and took me there. I love Jill. She's the, the, um, the unbelievably cool queen. Um, we have so many questions to deep dive about that, too. Um, to continue on, during high school, spent three years filming the Netflix series um, with an A, where we obviously met, um, flying back and forth between New Jersey and Toronto, Canada, A, where the show was filmed, um, playing the infamous villain and everyone's favorite bully with a heart, Josie Pye, which you, you just had the most fantastic art, too, and you divinely executed it. It was so good. <laughs> oh, I <laughs> and for anyone who doesn't know what Anna Green Gables is, but I find that hard to believe, but um, there might be other people jumping on. 
Uh, it's a beloved classic novel by Lucy Maud Montgomery, which follows an elderly brother and sister needing help running their farm in 1880s Prince Edward Island, Canada. A request for an orphan boy is sent to Halifax, but upon the orphan's arrival, they are surprised to learn they've accidentally received a young girl instead, who goes on to change their minds, hearts, and souls, shaking up their way of life and expanding what they believed was possible in a very beautiful tale of a young feminist. And since then, Miranda has gone on to pursue, uh, continue pursuing acting while attending USC, the U, how do you, is it University of Southern California? Is that what that is? Yeah. yeah. I'm so bad with acronyms. I know. <laughs> um, for communications. Yes. And, um, and uh, has started a blog about some experiences that she's had um, <laughs> battling Battling, I don't want to like the, throw it on the spot, but like uh, being an inspiration, overcoming some some physical health stuff, and that has really uh, shown what a light you are, and uh, your your courage and vulnerability has been so incredibly nice. inspiring to watch. Thank you. Did I miss anything? No, that that was like that was like everything. Yeah. Some nice yeah. adjectives. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. I'm glad you like that. So why don't why don't we why don't we begin at the beginning, and okay. and we'll t we'll think also when we're talking anything that um, any terminology film related, in case anybody doesn't know, let's let's just like explain everything okay. so, instead of just using a shorthand, so we're okay. all on the same page. But your beginning, the beginning of you as an artist. Where did yeah. that start? Where was the first moment that you knew that you wanted to tell stories? Oh, um, I was really bad at sports growing up. That in my town was the traditional route was like, let's do soccer and lacrosse. And I tried, um, I was on the C team of everything. So my mom put me in community theater. And I think I was always a bit of an expressive child. Um, <laughs> like talking little voices around the house and I don't know. I don't know if I was making up stories, but like characters rather. Like I would do impressions and make up characters and they would, I would like build upon them. So like I had this one character, Bertha, when I was really young. She was like, I don't know, like this 40 year old woman worked in a convenience store. And then Bertha like grew with me throughout the years. And I would bring her to Thanksgivings and Christmases. People oh. would hit. And so I think I was always kind of doing that since I was young. Um, Did Bertha it, come with you this past Thanksgiving? You know, people ask for her to come out, but mm. sometimes she's shy. I don't oh. know. Will she come out during this Instagram Live? Probably not. Okay. We, we can save that for a later one. If you get, yeah, maybe the second one. She needs a little, like, warming up. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, she's an introvert. Um, <laughs> she's an introvert. Yeah. Mm. She's had a tough life, but mm. so I was always an expressive child, did community theater. Um, that was my thing. I was in school shows. I was in my town shows and all that stuff. And then I did, I oh, no. guess, can you hear me? Did it cut, it cut for one second. Just go out? back on that thought really quick. Okay. Wait, can I try and turn my Wi-Fi off? Is that going to mess this up? I don't think so. If I like go in and Okay, ready? Three, two, one. Yeah, we're going in together. You're still here. Oh, I mean, paused on a really, really fantastic face of yours. I hope this is recorded and that we all get to see that again. Was it, um, was it okay? okay, am I back? You are back. You might be a little bit choppy, but may, carry on with your thought about um, the, 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 the uh, being in community theater and oh yeah you're there you're there okay i'll just keep talking and if it's bad i can go back on wi-fi but let's see yeah everyone's okay. here to support you we're, we're all excited thank thank you guys um okay so community theater and then my first like professional thing kind of started really randomly so i mm -hmm. was with a friend and her mom called up my mom because as we were in I think fifth grade at this time and I started my first job sixth grade and she was like hey does Miranda want to come in the city to this audition tomorrow and I was like heck yeah skip school 
go to a professional audition. It just sounded like so much fun. And so I went in and it was for a musical theater production in the city off Broadway, Little Miss Sunshine with amazing directors, um, James Lapine and Bill Finn who created Annie and Into the Woods, Whoa. different stuff. And so um, I ended up booking that job. I think it was like three or four rounds of auditions, which was, wild and I literally it's like every kid's dream to like start doing what they want to be doing and so I booked that job and then shortly after I started rehearsals in New York City and um was going in I eight shows a week we were, were performing for like probably six months um and then through there that's why I got hooked up with my agency and so I went the more formal um, professional route in that sense. And I've been with the same agent since when I was in sixth grade. Oh, that's incredible. How was it approaching a professional, like, like such a, such a rigorous work, um, uh, work day at such a young age? Like, did you, did you find your community theater helped you with that? I think, I think I was young, honestly. And I had a lot of energy and I was so excited to be there. Like, mm -hmm. I, I feel like with performing, I haven't done a ton of work. Like I don't have like movie after show after movie on my resume. I've done a few projects. And so I think I kind of always have this momentum of like, it's never, not that it's never enough. I just mean like I can never get enough of it. Like each project I've done has been so fulfilling and I crave mm -hmm. it, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there's, there's also like, you've obviously, and we can tap into this later, but you've tapped into your writing so deeply. So mm -hmm. there's, there's an aspect of you that's a, a wholehearted creator. And there's for sure something in the future where you're creating your own work too, because you're just such a well, well-rounded artist. But it's okay. amazing for you to have started so young. like Yeah, and it's evolved a long way. Like even when you I think that's actually a, a nice way to describe it. I've never thought of like my writing as an extension of my previous work, um, mm -hmm. but I think it is kind of intertwined and melded together. And I do hope I like start delving into that kind of creation. But for right now, I feel super um, like focused and inspired by like writing memoir, personal narrative stuff. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, because you, you kind of sit very in, in a strange position between um, a lot of the other cast members whose first job was and with any, where it's like you're coming in having like a cup, like notches in your belt, a little bit of salt and pepper, you're seasoned. <laughs> so like, what was your experience leading up to uh, booking the role of Anne? I would like to think that I had notches in my belt. And I certainly did in a sense because I had done a film, I think like the summer before. Mm -hmm. And that was great because that was my first on camera thing. Like Anne with a Knee was my only, that was my second on camera job. And it was a series instead of a film. And also um, the behind the scenes of the show I thought was pretty incredible. I wish everyone got a chance to go on uh, a major set at some point because it's really such a fascinating experience but mm. it was a totally different caliber um, than any production I had previously been a part of like just the sheer amount of people on set to like I feel like you felt the um, coordination like the the moving parts yeah. I mean not seamless all mm. the time and that's part of any big production um mm -hmm. but it was I think I was just as shocked in a lot of ways as some of the other kids going into that right like, how, how old were you on your first day I think I was 16 or 15 when I started that show and I remember like the first day on set in my head being like oh baby like we're in <laughs> you know like we had to describe, describe your first moment entering the set. Like, what did you see? Who did you meet? Who's the first person that you came across? Yeah. Um, so I think our first scene was in the schoolhouse. And it was one of my, like, biggest scenes of the first season because it was Josie Pye's introduction. Mm -hmm. And so I remember an AD walking me, or sorry, um, in this, what is an AD? 
an assistant director? I guess. I don't really know who it was. In <laughs> maybe the court. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. Theater, I forget. I forget all the acronyms. Yeah. Um, so along me down in the schoolhouse where we filmed, I mean, both of us filmed primarily a bunch of our scenes and um, we were starting rehearsals. And I remember like, I was like, oh shit, am I going to forget all my lines? Like I didn't know my lines. And then there were so many moving parts of all the kids being there mm -hmm. with a lot of us had parents on set. My mom was with me. Um, we love Jill. We love Jill. And <laughs> um, it was weird because we were all meeting each other, but we were also about to start rehearsing. And then I remember when we started the lines, it was like kind of weird. Cause I was like, I remember asking the girls afterhand, like we were playing like, oh, what was your first impression of blah, blah, blah. And they were like, we thought you were seriously like mean and intimidating and like really scary. <laughs> I was like, what? I have never given like a scary impression in my life, I feel like. But a few of the girls, actually like, I think all of them were like, you came in strong with those lines. And that was like a lot. <laughs> you were prepared. <laughs> Acting, it's acting, it's all a game. I was on Off Broadway, okay? <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, you know what, there too, I think there's also something. Um, I mean, first of all, you started this Instagram live like this, and it was just this. I mean, that was horrible, <laughs> a horrible close up on my part, but the, so sweet and angelic on you. But um, th there also must be something to be like where people assume that you might be like your character because yeah. that's what you're playing. Like there's, cause that's all they know you mm -hmm. as, right? But at the same time, you do have like a, a presence and that might be from your theatrical mm -hmm. background coming in and being like, just knowing how to take up space in a Me? way. Yeah, that's, in that's interesting. But I do, that, that concept of like people having a hard time separating character from person is such a reality. Cause I remember like, going through some of my comments when the first few seasons were being released and people were like, I hate you. Like you're just like weird like things. And I was like, all right, like this is, I, I take them as compliments. I feel like that means I've like done my job. Um, but I don't know. Oh so yeah. You absolutely <laughs> did your job because you're the complete, complete opposite. <laughs> Like, as, as you can tell right now, there's a complete opposite off camera. But how did you find managing um, those, those types of messages? Because the fandom is incredible and dedicated. And they're also very defensive of their heroes. And you're playing, for the most part, a villain um, until we get to see a little bit more of the cracks of her humanity throughout the season. Right. Yeah. I think I took it all in stride. I think it was more like well, like people actually care about this, care about my work or my character or my plot line. Mm. Like I was ever like truly boggled down. That would be a cool narrative, would be like me trying to overcome the haters and de-identify with my character, but it was a little, it wasn't like, yeah. I was more like, oh, cool. Oh, you're so, you're just, you're so strong. You're just so cool. <laughs> um, and then you're also at the same time, you're, you're um, going through some, really formative years throughout the three years that you're you're shooting like people are changing astronomically between seasons like jacob for instance came back and he was like he was like looking me in the eye and he was like hey and i was like uh, <laughs> hi <laughs> when did you grow <laughs> um so how was that experience for you um not only as a human but also as an actor jumping from season to season with all that change Oh my god, it was so weird and funny. And I truly like when I say that the cast grew up together, like I really mean we grew up together. And I feel like this, um, a lot of people who watch the show, like, don't realize that we used to spend, like the kids used to spend lunches, like playing classic middle school games of like, mm -hmm. paranoia, or like, truth or dare like all those little like weird things. And there was definitely flirtations and possible situationships. I won't spill all the tea, but I will say there were some like, like anytime kids are growing up together, it's a little bit messy. And it was, you couldn't like control it as much as 
I refer to some of these people as like, I guess like, what do you even call them? Like not colleagues, because that's more like businessy, but like castmates, coworkers. Mates, coworkers. Um I think when you're so young and you are growing up together mm -hmm. in kind of an immature, maturing way, there's it's it's as dynamic as any regular social setting for kids. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but that was so fun and it was so weird coming back year to year and the voice, uh, voices were dropping and it was like growing like two feet at a time. I was like, mm -hmm. you, I didn't know that boys grew like that. Like so weird. Yeah. And, and the girls were maturing. Even I look at myself from the first season and I'm like, what is that? What is that? <laughs> is that little thing on the camera. Like, how did I look like But I think it's, um, I think it's so fun anytime you have kids mm -hmm. on screen because you really see them. I mean, I mean, like, just like circling back to what you were saying about the, the, the juiciness behind the scenes, not going to lie, sitting at the front of the classroom and then they'd be like cut and you would see like who would get up and walk over to who and sit on someone's desk and start talking to them. And I'd be like, oh, what's up? <gasps> I thought, no, oh, oh, and I was just like watching drama on. <laughs> it was like a real. It was like a real schoolhouse. Like people had secrets. There was gossip. There was tea. Actually, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna lie. It wasn't like drama filled. Like I, I can compare it to like other accounts I've heard of other major popular shows. I won't name names, but you could you could infer what other shows were big at the time and They're, like listed <laughs> and. <laughs> experiences from those kids on set and and I think we had definitely one of the most tame environments but there certainly was like little tea here and there and like we always I think it's like it was almost a form of entertainment like nothing was real it was more just like what can we talk about this week you know yes. <laughs> well, I mean nothing was toxic it's not like anyone's no. in an unsafe environment it's just no. what happens when you put a group of humans together they become human and uh, everyone was like, so lovely and kind but at the same time uh, it, it, it became a new classroom because you were just leaving your respective schools in different parts of the countries and, and uh, uh, the, the different parts of the world and then coming in here to a physical classroom. So it like, it only makes sense that you guys would operate like the way that a class would. Like there were certain people who got along more than others and, and it just kind of unfolds, unfolds naturally. And then it's really funny to think about that um, translating on camera too. Yeah. I feel like you can tell, like, there are some shared moments that I have with some of the girls where, like, obviously we're all playing characters and whatnot, but I remember, like, I actually, when people, some of my friends here at college are so curious about my experience, which I think it is, like, rightfully so, it's a weird thing to, like, play a character. I don't, it's very foreign to someone mm -hmm. who hasn't been in that environment before, mm -hmm. and how to describe it is, like, we would be offset, like chattering, chattering, whatever, like waiting for scenes to roll. Maybe we're running a few lines, but like we're probably talking about like, oh, like this kid came back two feet tall. He's so cute, whatever, maybe whatever, blah, 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 blah. And then once we started rolling, like I feel like we had bonds with our characters that kind of mirrored ourselves in that we had so much chemistry. Mm. Like the kids had so much chemistry together as a whole offset because mm -hmm. we used to like go out for Indian food after taping and mm -hmm. we would hang out on the weekends in Toronto. And then when we started rolling, like I feel like that totally translated over into this hub where like I have a relationship with Isla, let's say, but Josie has one with Ruby too. And mm -hmm. that's so weird, but I feel like, we lived in this little hub and I have, like, I miss their characters as my character. Does that make sense? Oh, the way that you relate to them in terms of the characters? Yeah. Oh, I mean, first of all, for chemistry, you can totally see that. And just by spending time with them, you, yeah. you, have, you, you develop a shorthand. You're like, I look at someone, I look at you, and we have a, a shared experience. Yeah. Uh, even if, like, 
it's very different than someone who might have been like, I want to interview you, Miranda, and you pop up and you have no idea who they are. There's just an inherent like uh, shorthand or there's just like a look in the eyes. But I feel like what you're trying to say, if I'm articulating this correctly, is you miss not only interacting with like, say, Kyla, but you miss interacting as Josie with Ruby. Yeah. Like, the, the play that you guys had as those people. Absolutely. That's even when you were talking about us specifically, it's bringing up one moment of, we had like one, one scene that was more interactive than the rest. And it was when you were at the front of the classroom, duh, always. And I think <laughs> Josie, like the character was like reading King, I don't know, we were reading like old English, of course. Oh, yeah. Or I think I was getting up and being defiant and like dissing someone in class and we had a little exchange and it was like one of my favorite moments because <laughs> I felt like, like you said, like feels so much chemistry with you mm -hmm. and translating that over to like, I just thought also like, um, like our two characters had a nice like matchup. Like that was, it's oh. a little, both like spice on either end. 100%. I feel like if Mr. Phillips could have been anyone, he would have wanted to be Josie Pye. <laughs> <laughs> like just the like the sass the style the, the effortlessness wow <laughs> like yeah. there, there was for sure that like your 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 character spice was always like a mm, well played <laughs> like <laughs> like well done well done um but you, the the nice thing though too is that 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 actually makes for um just a more fruitful a fruitful um piece of art because you're no longer you're filling in spaces because it, that's never going to be on the page right it's not like it's like uh Josie gets up and says something mm -hmm. defiant to somebody to be like I think the, about like the rules that's not what you're supposed to do and it's nowhere does it say that we like have a moment being like yeah uh but but you build that because of the connection that you have with the people and like that's so so important because what the art is trying to do as well is to connect with people and obviously what you're saying is true because like let's look at you know at the people showing you love right now from mexico brazil um it's 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 amazing to see what that reach that reach was yeah. but if you had to go back to if you could like give yourself any advice for your season one self now as this fully forms Miranda, what would you tell her? Uh, I don't even know. I would say like soak it up and like really take in everything, but I think I did. Like, mm -hmm. I remember it so vividly. Um, I don't know, honestly, a practical one. I feel like I was always really solidifying my lines in the trailer the morning of <laughs> bad but <gasps> I knew them I just needed a little extra reading you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and sometimes on set I think it was more of a confidence thing like I would need to grab like I would ask um like the crew on set if anyone had those little mini scripts yeah like, for, for those watching we normally receive like big packets of scripts that's like the whole thing, like big paper. And then on set the day of, they chop the script up to whatever scenes you're filming. And a lot of times you only film a part of one scene. So say a scene's like three and a half minutes long, you'll film on a random day, like minute two through minute 235. And then the scene gets chopped up. And so uh, what what are, what are they called? Are they just sides. called? Yeah, I think sides, yeah. yeah. Anyone you did a great job of explaining them. Yeah. Like, does anyone have an extra side? And someone would fork one over from their back pocket and be like, watch. And then go into the corner and just like read over them a bunch of times. I knew mm -hmm. that. Like, I think I was always, wor that's obviously anyone's worst nightmare is like forgetting lines. Yeah. Well, what, what, um, what would you say throughout your filming experience is your proudest moment or the one that you overcame something uh, terrifying? Jump yeah. Off what you're saying. Um, I think it would be a pretty obvious one if you know the character arc, but season three was challenging. Mm -hmm. I remember getting sides or scripts for certain episodes and being like, oh, sugar, this is going to be a lot of crying. Mm -hmm. um, 
And I think honestly, one of the toughest scenes was there was like a public crying one in a church and it was a full packed um, set that day with like so many, just so many people. It was like all the characters were in the room, like mm -hmm. Matthew, Marilla and all of Diana's family. I think like I, there's so many people mm -hmm. and Joel, and she was like, what is the woman's name who plays Rachel? I should know this. Uh, Corinne. Corinne, thank you. Um, I remember going up to Corinne that day and being like, I'm really nervous because I have this basically like public outburst scene where Josie starts sobbing, crying because she mm. realized everyone has realized that she has kissed Billy mm -hmm. and now um, a ruined woman and <laughs> it ruined her and like ruined her entire reputation, her entire family it's like brought the house down mm -hmm. and she's sitting in the church looking around and she realizes that everyone's looking at her and everyone knows. And she has this public outburst where she starts sobbing. And I went to Corinne and I was like, I'm really nervous about today. Like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to cry. The previous scenes, the crying scenes were much more private. And I felt like I had time to mentally get into that space. Mm -hmm. But this day was, it was moving so fast. Like you, it's one of those days where it's like, do your job and move on, you know? Right. And I think I hadn't experienced that level of pressure before. And I still mm. to this day, truthfully feel a little bit unsatisfied with mm. that scene. I guess mm. I don't know from the perspective of watching it back because I rarely watch back scenes that I'm in. Um, mm. I don't know if that's good or bad or whatever, but <laughs> the feeling I had that day was like, I don't, I don't know if I felt entirely satisfied. Mm. I mean, that is a very valid feeling as an artist, because you want to be able to explore the full depth of what is possible for you to experience as that character in that moment. And when you have a time crunch, it is really, uh, it's really hard to like jump into those emotional places. And it's this funny balance where someone could also articulate the other end saying, well, I'm sure Josie didn't know how to handle it. I'm sure yes. she had a lot of pressure in that moment to try to say the right thing or do the right thing or not feel a certain way. Um, and like holding it in together and like having a, like many things exist at mm -hmm. once and have all those balls in the air and right. still like what the, I was like, what, am I allowed to swear? <laughs> like censored myself. I'm like, what the f is happening? <laughs> <laughs> Who am I? Yeah. And I need to get a grip. But uh, I mean, so you can exist in, in either in either space too. But I, as an artist, I would be like, oh, I wish I would have done that. Um, but at the same time, I will advocate and say that your performance is absolutely amazing. You're very talented and it was, it was very moving. I think I'm easily, I'm easy, easily validated as well. I took a look down at the comments and someone said, you nailed that scene. And I'm like, okay, thanks. <laughs> My mind's changed. Thanks, yeah. moving on. Next question. <laughs> Great. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready to move on. Um, so uh, throughout that experience that you've like grown up on stage, on the camera, um, what would you say it has been your biggest takeaway from the entire Anne experience? Ooh, I think my biggest takeaway would, on an acting front, um, on any front, would be that I can certainly handle exponentially more than what I think I can. Mm. Um, and I don't know if this is a takeaway, more so of a realization, but like, I just love it so much. I'm like dying to work again. And then, mm -hmm. so I think, um, I mean, one of my biggest takeaways was my personal relationships, i.e. Um, this little chat that mm -hmm. we're having. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, just all the other castmates, like that's been so amazing. And I guess kind of seeing the caliber to which community can be formed. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a really unique example of community and mm -hmm. 
oh my gosh, like I just fell in love with the experience. Yeah, well, you also had a, a unique experience in the sense that you were the one person from the state that you're from who was participating in the show. And it's not like you were going back home to have the possibility of hanging out with people unless it was an organized flight situation. Right. Yeah, I still like plan my trips to Toronto. Actually, Glenn is coming to New York in like a uh, week. I'm going to see her then. But I'm always, I'm always in the back of my head. I'm like, when am I going to Toronto also? Mm -hmm. I have so many points racked up on this one airline um, because from flying back and forth for work. So I get like basically free flights to Toronto for a couple more years. Damn. I know. And who knew that this airline was helping you maintain your friendships? I oh. shout out Porter. I'm like, and this is sponsored by Porter. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, this is, <laughs> and thank you also, Porter, for giving me the same flight situation as Miranda <laughs> as a complimentary gift. <laughs> Can someone tag Porter in this in this chat, please? Because it would do us all a favor for building community. Exactly. In the name of Anne with the knee. Thank you, Porter. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. Um, so, so you're, you're dying to get back into it. What would, be, um, uh, what would be your dream project or dream role or a story or a moment that you could, if you could manifest any of it? I would love to do like a, an upbeat, more comedic show. I think I like, I think I've had my fill of like dramatic, um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I would literally be um, satiated by anything right now, but mm -hmm. I think I would love to do like a, I don't even know what it's called, like a multi-cam, like. Okay. Upbeat. Like yeah. a, with some, I have been dying for forever to do a show where there's improv on set um, and like going off of lines. That's my dream. Yes. It's also so fun because you become, there's a point where you're just, you just know your character so well. And then things that the writers could never have thought of come out, like come out of your mouth and they're like, that's perfect. Exactly, exactly. And like, yeah, it's so weird how you have that, that personal relationship, like you think like them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love it. Oh, and also you're so funny too. Like you've just, when you said, oh sugar, I'm, I like mentally clock that being like, that's something that I want to put into my vocabulary. <laughs> what a fantastic response. Oh, beep. <laughs> and I think it's appropriate, but yeah, I mean, fair. so um, in terms of you as an artist, a writer, a an actress, and your like your beautiful mindset, where do you find inspiration? What do you pull from? I think I pull from social interactions that I have in my everyday life. Hmm. I think sometimes I'll replay re interactions in my head and be like, how could that have gone differently? Or whether it's like, I don't know. Like, I think sometimes, a, a lot of times now where I pull my writing from is like things like miscommunications in conversations that like, don't, I'm either like, okay, you're not understanding my point or I have no idea what's going on. Mm -hmm. And this sense, like, I'll write out, not literal scripted conversations, but, like, feelings I had from that interaction, and mm -hmm. I guess that's where a lot of my, like, I don't know if this conversation is switching over to the other end of things, but, like, in terms of my diagnosis, I think a lot of the writing on that is provoked by interactions I have in my everyday life. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. It was kind of vague. I don't know. I mean, I'd, like, fully up to you to to share your experience. Um, you know, yeah, I'm like such an open book, happy to talk about literally anything. I know people are very, people can be really sensitive around like, yeah, I don't know what you would call it, physical illnesses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't but, know, I'm a I mean, practitioner around it. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think like, um, that, that did, did through that time, your, the part of you that's an artist, how, did that help you um, find strength? Did that help you, is that, is, was your, your blog your outlet 
Yeah, I think, okay, so to give some background to whoever's watching or watching back, um, I last summer in June of 2021 was diagnosed with stage three breast cancer at the ripe age of 19. So um, just so strange. And it really wasn't like, it was like the full Monty experience, I'd call it. Um, it oh, Monty. <laughs> like a, it wasn't like a, oop, let's just nip it in the butt and move on. It was like, whoa, mm -hmm. you are going to have to go through a lot of treatment. So I did four months of chemo, um, lost all my hair, shout out my hair extensions. Um, and then I did, I froze my eggs. I had a double mastectomy, um, which is a procedure that basically cuts out like all of the tissue underneath the skin in the chest for those who don't know, just to get a little graphic on here. Mm. And then I did my rounds of radiation and now I'm on like a bunch of different medication. Um, and during that time, as Steven was saying, I started a blog and that when I talk about like how, how a lot of my writing or art is born out of human communication, human interaction, I think it was like during that time, I think any time it's a universal experience where you're going through something really hard, whether that be like losing a loved one or a divorce mm -hmm. or um, I don't know anything, name any life changing yeah. thing. Um, it can feel super isolating. And I think that was my blog and my writing was such a, such an important form of communication for me because it, I couldn't always speak about it like this. Mm -hmm. it, I didn't even know how to articulate what I was feeling mm -hmm. and telling that story through um, like private thinking and then going on to to revise and rework and really um, match what I was putting out to what I was feeling um, that was such a therapeutic experience and that was like the this, this story I needed to be telling at the time and still am um, yeah. what I'm, I'm so called to be creating art around that in my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, first of all, like your strength, perseverance and vulnerability to, to share that because I think a lot of people are afraid to share that. But it's, yeah. a, it's a human experience. Yeah. Like, and not only were you so like you found so much positivity and and levity and light, but you weren't shying away from the what it made you feel as well. Like you can be both at the exact same time. You can have a positive outlook, but also be like, today this fucking sucks. Yeah. Which which was so beautiful. And then even you as an artist too, from the get go, it's that call to connect, that call to let me show you this side of myself whether it's like i'm playing um someone who's a bully i'm playing someone who wants to hurt someone i'm playing someone who wants to connect i'm playing someone who wants to make someone laugh um yeah. uh, i i want to share in in the way of like this is real and this is what's happening and i think that, that was like such a tremendous gift that you've done because there's it's rare what's happening, but there's also so many women affected by it. Um, yeah, and I think um, you made so many wonderful points there. I think drawing a connection that I hadn't um, previously remembered, like, or realized, as when you're talking about this, like, duality of, wow, this can be, like, really amazing, mm -hmm. um, enlightening, and life-changing and then also being able to recognize and integrate and live with that flip side of like holy shit this is really hard and like mm -hmm. really dark or this really sucks mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of people have a tough time joining those two worlds because obviously you only want one you mm -hmm. be amazing if if every woman who had breast cancer or any person who has gone through a hard thing could pull out all of the amazing things and and really embrace this this strong warrior 
beautiful narrative. Um, but that's not how it is. And that's not how life is. And I think like bringing in the, the acting work from before, I think I was so happy. Um, I got to play out season three's narrative for my character mm -hmm. in showing a little bit of that duality in a sense of like mm. things can be things can appear one way and not always be how it is like mm -hmm. I think the character Josie Pye presented a really strong front um and dealt with massive insecurity and um and self-hatred and mm. other elements that I think it was it was nice to see it was nice to see her duality um, and I think that's a common theme in my life right now. And I, I think it will continue to be. And I think it stands at the forefront of my messaging is like, I don't know if I want to say like helping others, but rather like just telling my experience and hoping that people can gain something from that in, mm -hmm. in these worlds that are so, feel so, um, dissonant, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the storytelling connects us in the sense that it makes us realize that we have someone who might have a shared experience and there may be other women out there who read what you're feeling right and go oh i don't have to be the like i don't have to be the picture of positivity today i can feel what this feels to go through what i'm going through because someone had the courage to say it Someone had the courage to be honest about the experience of it. And, and when relationship to what you've gone through, to have the moments that you have now with your community and your family, and your, your career, it makes it more fruitful because you know what it is to fight for it. And, and I think funny enough, the same thing goes for Josie Pye, to, for all of us to watch her and like, oh God, she's so mean. And then we see why she is because of her home life, because of these experiences she's having. Um, then we, we feel so much more because it's been so far in the other direction that when, yeah. we, when we get that heart and we get that warmth, it's so earned in a, in a, in a way. Yeah, that's another, um, that's another theme that like keeps coming forward is just like, I think we forget how much humans are drawn to humans, mm. how much vulnerability and truth and um, kind of like letting your guard down is so attractive. It is. I think um, people love that about the story of Anne too, is like the imperfections and um, kind of like the here I am world that mm -hmm. Anne sense it's it's awesome and people watch that and they go damn I wish I could do that like I wish I could wear my heart on my sleeve because it's the truth is it's so scary mm -hmm. and I, the comedic aspect of Anne in some sense is like I think Anne she doesn't really feel a lot of fear and I think that's another thing that like people are drawn to is like oh shit she just does it like she just flings herself into these situations yeah um Whereas I think depending on the person, I certainly feel a lot more reserved before um, sharing or advocating or fighting or exposing my heart um, to other humans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like, so I, I, I only know that people are drawn to it because I'm so drawn to it. Like, I even when I hear people speaking conversations about certain things they've gone through, when you can tell when when they share a little nugget that you feel like oh shit like i'm so blessed to be in the room or like i'm damn like wow that was really that was really candid of them um mm -hmm. and you just want more of it you know always i think these they're the moments when people um reveal themselves yeah. like this when you when they're just being so authentic and honest whether it's like whether it's through whether it's through like uh, fearlessness um uh, insecurity uh, courage uh, pain 
when you just see someone being like, oh yeah, that's where you're at. And I see you. And that's what, that's what matters. Yeah. And I think like that I see you is so important because it also inherently says like, I see you, I'm with you. I like feel that too, even if it's not right at some point in my life. And that's why like, it's not like we feed off of other people vulnerability just because it's interesting or it feels like tea or gossip Mm. as deep down everyone has twinges of emotions or experiences that they repress themselves so to see someone else open up about it like Mm. a lot of you Mm. will have fear and insecurity and self-doubt and like Mm. just so much more shit up there than people Mm. want like everyone does yeah and I don't know why we think that, like, we can hide it. Because, yeah. because we can. Because people can present a certain way. But, like, if people remember that and walk through this world being like, I know you have your little box up there, too. Mm-hmm. It would um, help a lot of us out. Yeah, especially when you, if you see somebody in a moment that is feeling insecure or vulnerable and you just go, hey, what's, that, what's the box saying right now? yeah can i help can i help with it because i'll tell you i'll tell you that you did really well in that scene that you hear about or like all of these beautiful people will as well um so i mean thank you for sharing that and thank you for sharing your story every i think every time that you've done so it has like it's it it moves me and it moves everyone and it just inspires and encourages people to to be open more than anything and like I think people are just begging for that people are begging for authenticity in a world that's full of filters and um, Mm -hmm. ideas that are cure of uh, like lives that are curated and photographed and put out that you're like you know here's the real thing I can go look amazing in Europe but at the same time be like I have to take oral chemo pills (laughs) like that's just reality um so thank you for that oh Thank you so much. So we have a special guest who's about to join shortly. Um, but before we do, something that someone shared with me recently um, in one of these, their like spaces, like a live type situation, is when we come together, we have curated a community here. Um, and something that we don't always talk about is an ask. How do we ask for help? Or how do we ask for what would best serve us? So while we have people here, I want to ask you, what would be the best way? Like, what is your ask? How can the people here help you in any type of form, whether it's like checking out your blog or going to your Instagram? What's the best way that this community can help you? I love, I feel like my blog is like, even though I have it on my Instagram page, it feels like this like hidden gem to me. Because sometimes when people will DM me saying, oh, I read this specific blog post, I'm like, oh my God, what? Like, oh. I know it's linked there and I know I reference it, but I just, it's so, um, it's such a raw piece of my heart. Like it's, mm. um, any piece I've written have been like sweated and tears poured over them. And so it's always confusing and amazing to me when people actually them and I so I think that's fun that I don't know if that's like we're helping I don't know it feels kind of weird being like hey, no. go check out her blog I'm putting it I'm putting it mirandamckeon.com right now one in a million <laughs> go look at it go read it you'll be you will not be disappointed it's like a little um like a little oyster pearl you know uh, it's a little- I mean and your writing is fantastic most authentic contribution I'd say mm, mm, it's beautiful so Without do a request, I'm going to send the invite to our um, special surprise guest for. I'm a- so excited. <laughs> I hope it is. <laughs> for a round, they popped into the chat earlier, and I was like, "Oh, they're on time," and we're just running a little bit of late. Um, we'll see. We'll see once once they pop in. Let's see. Did they get it? Did they get it? It's play. It's play time now. It's playtime now for sure. Here's it here. Oh, there, invite. Okay. Did it go? I don't mean. Oh no. 
Oh no, special guest, if you're in the room, it says you need the latest version of Instagram to join. <laughs> so you may have to quickly download Instagram, the update your Instagram. Guys, the special guest is really special, so you guys are gonna wanna hang on. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know, but. I'm just gonna quickly, I'm just gonna quickly message special guest. But in the meantime, if you guys have questions for Miranda, throw them up into the comments. Uh and we'll do a round robin. Updating quickly, special guest is updating quickly. <laughs> no question. Um, I could just make up questions for myself, maybe. Or, or, or I can. Um, what was your first impression of Amy Beth? I think she comes on she, I saw her in her work environment first, and I was like, she knows how to handle a room. And yeah. looking crazy, because she was so young, um, anytime I was on set, and especially because I didn't see a lot of her filming, um, I am blown away by, oh. <laughs> What a surprise. <laughs> Stealing Amy Beth's thunder, too. Do you guys <laughs> set up my door? <laughs> um, Did you get a haircut? Uh, yeah, I cut it and dyed it. It looks Wait, good. It good. Thanks. <laughs> guys, I'm the special guest. <laughs> surprise. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. So we are welcoming the amazing Glenna Walters. Mm. Everyone oh, yeah. cheers, Thank claps. You. Brazil is Brazil is clapping. Um, so for 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 the reason that we have um, our very very special glass glass, I'm just like I'm like <laughs> this top is so good. Um, special guest here is we are about to play what we call the newlywed game, which we're getting there. <laughs> I'm, I'm officiating. <laughs> it's a game where I ask, so these two have prepared their answers ahead of time for themselves and for their teammate. And what they have to do is see if they can get as many of the answers the same. Does everybody understand? Miranda, I already don't know some of the answers. <laughs> Half of them. I know. Well, they'll be good. Okay. Um, does, is there anything that you want to say to each other before beginning? A pep talk, maybe? Uh, yeah, I confused a lot of people in the group chat. Sorry. The two <laughs> is I'm flying to New York and seeing Miranda. That's it. Um, I'd like to say you're going down. <laughs> no, we're supposed to be a team. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, you don't know me at all. <laughs> okay. Marriage comes with compromise. Mm. Are we all on the screen together? Think. Oh, that's adorable. Now go up, up, up top. Up top. Down low. Yes. <laughs> you guys are great. Alrighty. Question <laughs> number one. Um, I think for this first one, um, I think you should say your answers at the same time. I'll go like after the question. I'll go three, two, one because it's a, it's a, it's a one or the other. Okay. So, Write my answer for Miranda, and she writes her answer for me. Uh, for this one, um, for this one, I already know my answers. Yeah, you, it, she, she said Miranda's actually sent me, sent me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were doing like a whole like board. You can do a board. You can do a board. That would be funny. I'm not that advanced, so you can keep I, your. I don't, I don't be vocal. I have it all. This is this is it. This is going so well. Okay. This is a hit. <laughs> okay. Um, question number one. This one is um, one of one of the other. So just say your answer I'll, I'll, on the count of three. Who is the more adventurous one? One, two, three. Miranda. <laughs> <laughs> just you're just waiting. Me, Miranda. Did you say me or did you say? You said you. Miranda I, said Miranda. Yeah, and I said Miranda. Point. 
point. Oh, why don't you keep track things on it? On the scoreboard. Wait, so you <laughs> both get the point. Okay. Yeah, you both get a point. You both get a point. You both got it right. Okay. 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 So this one, you have um, your own answers, and you may have, this should be the same. When did you know you were going to be best friends? I have two answers for this. Okay. I do. Lena, you go first. Okay. So the, que the question you texted me was best friends forever. <laughs> um, so my I look. for like best friends, and my second answer is best friends forever. Okay. 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 First best friends, I think it was season one. We were going out to Indian food with everyone. And you and I were in the back of Christian's SUV. <laughs> and you were just like, <laughs> we were just talking about like everything. You know, what? was Lori in the front too? <laughs> yeah. That's, that is that's Christian's mom <laughs> for context. That's Christian's mom. Yeah. Wow. Do you remember okay. what you talked about? Oh, I think we were like talking about like, just like life and like the friendships we had in life. Cause there were like some friendships that like weren't great going on in both of our lives. Mm. Oh, dump them. Dump them. Trash them. <laughs> oh, get out of here. Okay. Well, okay. Second. Okay. Second one, best friends forever. I would say was like, well, like we were already best friends season two and then season three, like forever was when Miranda's mom, Jill, who I love deeply, couldn't come. Miranda would come and stay with me. And it would be like, I would like go to school in the morning and she would just be like with my mom. <laughs> Glenna, I wrote that same thing. I said, I said when, um, when I would come stay in Toronto for like filming stays and I would say in your home, and it felt so cozy, like Glenna's cat Chi Chi and I would like chill. Actually, Chi Chi and I didn't really vibe that much, but <laughs> in theory, we did. And um, my other one, Glenna, was when we started ordering cookies and cream milkshakes from Kraft out like, in the middle of the nights. Oh, I told that story where I sprained my ankle running for one. <laughs> <laughs> that was my that was my highlight of the last one that we did last. That was great. But that was so sweet. So then technically you guys get a point and a half. Yeah. I will yeah. also say Miranda and I started sharing trailers by season three. And I think that was also fun. We oh. did like dress each other in the morning. Like, like we would put both of our costumes in Miranda's trailer. They started doing that. They would put Glenda's costumes in my trailer. <laughs> That's so sweet. So, written like Glenna Miranda, you know? Mm -hmm. Who needed the most? Who needed the most help getting Miranda. dressed? Miranda, no you could, hesitation. Well, we both needed help. There were a lot of buttons. Mm. But I, I couldn't. By season three, guys, I couldn't even get on my little <laughs> thing. That shit was so tight. Like, yeah, I was being, I was being buttoned into that for sure. Okay. Uh, next question: um, Who is their favorite? celebrity oh my god this one i don't think this in the text message <laughs> okay well you're gonna have to come up with it now so then we will say um glenda think of the one for yourself I... think of the first person that comes to mind write it down on that piece of paper okay and at the moment you what like at the... All, like at the moment they're my at the moment yeah right now right now this is also just to see, like, some of these questions are, like, things that I don't know if you would actually know of your best friend. It's just to see what your answer is going to be. Um, yeah. So, Marina, you give your answer for Glenna, and she's going to hold it up on a piece of paper. I literally have no idea. So I started racking my brain, and I remembered that, like, when you posted that makeup look of, like, Inspired by Twiggy, I was, like, freaking out. And then I – so I said Twiggy, but I don't know who Twiggy is. <laughs> okay. Um, so my favorite at the moment is Florence Pugh. Oh! Love that. Love uh, her. I concur. I concur. Um, and now, now, um, write who you think Miranda's is. 
and Miranda is going to say hers first, and then you'll hold up your paper. Oh, Miranda, can you give me a hint? <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't. I... It's not Twiggy. It's not Twiggy. Mm -hmm. I like fully <laughs> even. Lena, you have three seconds. Guys, I, okay. Um, um, I'm, guys, I have no idea. Okay, All right. Throw yes, something like, out. Harry Styles. Okay, no. Guess who I said, Glenna. I feel like it's like an an influencer, maybe. Yeah. Or, is oh. it? No. It's you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Dude, I wrote that. <laughs> Could you imagine if I wrote that? I should have. I oh, have. You should have. Nobody got a point, but now that you know you're on the table, Lena. Um, okay. Uh, okay. This is a this is a one or the other. Um, so when I go one, two, three, you say, "Who is most likely to cry watching a sad movie?" One, two, three. Me. Oh, we got some water Are... looks in the house. Am I a crier? Yeah, big time. Oh, whoa. Let's cry together sometime. Uh, I think, honestly, I think we would both cry at a movie. What movie has made you each cry separately the most? The Notebook. Watch that on a plane. Ruined me. Oh. Yeah. Boy in the Striped Pajamas. I was, like, messed up for a couple days. Yeah. I also just watched My Policeman with Harry Styles and Emma Corrin. Balled mm -hmm. my eyes. That was really? a good movie by Harry Styles. Pardon? That was a good guess for Harry Styles. Was mm -hmm. it? Because I think he was going to be my second. Mm -hmm. Love him. And Florence. Mm -hmm. Doesn't beat Glenna, though. <laughs> Doesn't beat Glenna. <laughs> uh, next question. Um, what is their nickname for you? Oh. We, will, we will say, Glenna, what do you think Miranda calls you? Write it on I... the paper. You know? Mm -hmm. Okay, Miranda, oh. you say... You say yours for Glenna. Glenny. <laughs> what is it? It's Kenny. Kenny. <laughs> Kenny. <gasps> That's where did, my. Where does that come from? I don't know. It was just one day on set. Miranda would be like, Danny, come here. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. Okay. So now, and what is your nickname for Miranda? I would say sometimes I copy your mom's nickname. Mm -hmm. Oh, you I do? Yeah. And then sometimes I copy your friend's nickname. I, I didn't, I'm not creative. Okay. Well, I, I've already, yeah, my name has horrible nicknames. It's not great to abbreviate. So okay. what's your final answer? Are you ready? Randy. That was, that was what I said. Mm -hmm. Well done. And then is that, is that, is that a friend or is that your mom? That's a friend. Mm. And where does that come from? <laughs> my, there's older my older brother's friends used to come over when I was like a meek little middle schooler and they, they started calling me Randall. <laughs> I was like, that's messed up, you guys. And so, um, so then Randy caught on, but my mom calls me Panda. That's sometimes, sometimes Genny will call me Panda. I mean, also, if you, if you, um, as your writing career is flourishing, you should consider Randy as the title of your autobiography. <laughs> That's actually, I'm just going to call my publicist right now. <laughs> you should. Um, uh, what, next question. What is their favorite color? Why don't we go with, um, Glenna, you say what Miranda's is. Okay. Miranda, I think your favorite color is like a sage green. Okay. Um, nope, you're wrong. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't feel tied to colors. Um, I think you did. 
I said pink. I said yours would be like a blue or a green. Um, well, I'm going to go with black at first because you wear a lot of dark colors in the yeah. wardrobe. But then I was like, I feel like that's not it. My favorite color is a dark color. Hey, it's spit it out. Forest green. <laughs> that's my niche. Okay. Good. Well, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. I also was that I did I not say those colors as a suggestion too? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Good for me. <laughs> um, if they were an animal, what animal would they be? Oh. M Miranda, why don't you go first for Glenna? <laughs> I said I said we would both I'm like imagining this in a little world together. I said we would both be dolphins together. I was reading these questions, I was like, mm, uh, dolphin. <laughs> I feel like you'd be like a spider monkey. All right. <laughs> okay, next question. But what about for yourself? What did you say you would be? Oh, um, like a hummingbird. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cute. You'd be a just, cute just hummingbird. Full, beautiful, hummingbird. <laughs> I'm a stallion. I'm a whore. <laughs> I mean, you could be so many things. You're a complex human being. Okay, and finally, <clears throat> the final question is, if they were a character on Anne, and not necessarily, it could be their own character, but based off of their real life personality, what character would they be? I feel like this is so hard, because I don't feel like either of us fit into one complete box. You can do I, a mishmash. I did mishmashes. Okay, what's my mismatch? I think I mismatched you between. Um, I think I mismatched you between Matthew and Rachel. <laughs> oh, I love that. Right. Explain. Explain the 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 how you came to that. This so Matthew's like really sweet, debatably my favorite. Actually, both Matthew and Rachel might be my favorite characters on the show. Um, but <laughs> Matthew's like really sweet and like has the best heart ever. And then Rachel's like really spicy and like doesn't give a beep. And and I feel like you you have the best parts of each of them. Oh my god. Holy gasp. I know. Okay, I think Miranda would be a mix between Anne um, and a mix between, hmm. I think you have a bit of Matthew in you as well. I just think like Anne, like you are incredibly adventurous and like, just like you can like easily speak your mind and I will listen to whatever you say because whatever you say always feels right. Really sweet. <laughs> And Matthew, just the same, like, just the most caring, self-aware, beautiful person I know. <laughs> <laughs> you see that Amy Beth just said slay. <laughs> slay. <laughs> She's like, mm, yeah. Well, that was lovely, and that was so sweet. Um, why don't, I mean, um, well, should we, should we, uh, maybe we'll end I'll start off by saying like, thank you to Kino for hosting this. Thank you to Miranda for sharing your gloriousness that is the human that is you. Thank you, Glenna, for um, your set deck, your closet. <laughs> thank you for showing up wearing black. Um, it's just brown. So it's, oh, uh, 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 this black <laughs> brown sweater. Um, for being wonderful and hilarious and being the person that is you. Um, maybe, maybe to tie things off, why don't we say um, why don't you guys answer this one final question? Because I lied before. What is your favorite thing about each other? Oh, no, really. I don't, nothing's really coming to mind. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. Favorite thing about Glenna? Or first thing that comes to mind? Like I everything. I think of like your essence, you know? Or like maybe Chi Chi, maybe. You're, I like where you live. Um, I miss it. Oh my gosh, Glenna and I don't tell anyone this. Whoever's listening, cover your ears. 
Glenna and I, whenever we're together, we order McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> What's Glenna's order? That on her floor with like, like, like legs sprawled, um, every, everything. What do we get? Chicken nuggets, fries, always a McFlurry. God, oh. broken. One time my let us get Dairy Queen and we were really pissed. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. It was a fight. I think my favorite thing about Miranda, I think a lot of times on set, I think Miranda really keeps me in check in like a really good way where it's like her mom does it too, which I'm like so thankful for. Like I remember like we'd be like out for dinner and I'd be complaining about something so mm. stupid. And then they would just like, be able to show me both sides of a situation so perfectly. And, oh my God, I'm overreacting. I'm crazy. You're right. <laughs> we really just gaslight her. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's so true. Like, Miranda, you were like so level headed. You can see the best in everyone around you. And you just make, you always, whenever I'm with you, you make the world a more beautiful place. Could, no one can say it better than that. That Those are the feelings that Miranda exudes and Glenna too. I, this was so beautiful. Thank you both so much for joining. Mm -hmm. Everyone who's here, please go check mm -hmm. out MirandaMcCann.com. Read mm -hmm. the blog. You will not mm -hmm. be disappointed. Um, and you guys all have a beautiful day. And I hope this provided some... <laughs> <laughs> Just kissing the tops of your heads. Getting a double chin. Um, the, uh, uh, I hope this provided some scope for the imagination. Right? Do you see what yeah. I did there? Do you see uh, what I did there? Hindered spirits right now. Yeah. Well, let's, make a, let's make a heart. No, Miranda, like this. Yeah, like that. Almost. <laughs> Glenda, you gotta be the other way. Turn, turn your, yeah, yeah. A little Guys, high, hand higher. Hand um, higher. Steven, this looks so not a heart for me. It might look like it for you. <laughs> oh. Well, okay. it's going to be recorded on this one. Anyways, um, love you guys. Have a beautiful day. Love you. Enjoy New York. <laughs>